All right, well, now we come to the point of time in our service where we are going to remember Christ around his table. So if you have your Bibles, would you take them out and turn to 1 Peter chapter 1? We're going to be looking at verses 21 and 22. If you don't happen to have a Bible, just raise your hand. There are some men coming down the aisles, and they will get you a Bible. If you don't actually own a Bible, we would encourage you to take this Bible for yourself as our gift to you so that you could begin reading Jesus' word, God's word, on your own. This is a time for Christians. It's a time for Christians to remember what Christ has done for them. It's a time for them to remember the work that he performed in their place at the cross. And to help us do that today, this passage is going to help us see Christ's involvement in God's plan for salvation, and it encompasses the full line of human history. And as we look at our passage, I want you just to be looking at the way it is that Christ is participating in God's design for the salvation of the lost throughout all of human history. Starting at verse 20, for he was foreknown before the foundations of the world, but has appeared in these last times for the sake of you, who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and your hope are in God. We see the first part of Jesus' participation in God's design for salvation of the lost occurring before the foundations of the world. This is a time and a context in which there was no creation. There were no people. There was nothing. And yet in that context, Jesus was foreknown by God. The Father and the Son had enjoyed a perfect love relationship, a self-giving love relationship in which they enjoyed spiritual equality and role distinction. And in that, they knew all things. They knew one another, and they knew all things. They knew what they would create. They knew that they would create the universe. They knew that they would create humankind. And they also knew that everything that humankind would do. They knew every single thing that humankind would do that would offend them. And in God's wisdom, he devised a plan in his mercy and kindness by which he would save some. And that Christ himself would be a substitute to receive God's wrath against those that God chose for himself. That was the part in which Christ was participating before the foundations of the world. As we move through verse 20, we can see how Christ continued to participate in that. The passage says that he has appeared in these last times. In Peter's last times, Christ appeared. And his appearing was not a a case in which he parachuted in and did his thing and then left. He actually set aside his glory, and he condescended to take on human flesh and be born of a virgin woman, just like the rest of us, so he could become one of us, so that he could represent us before God in God's system of justice. And so he became one of us. That was another way in which he participated in God's design for salvation. But then we see what he did actually to do that is Before our passage, it's right there in verses 18 and 19 that Christ actually redeemed with his own precious blood. He went to a cross and he gave his life as an atoning sacrifice for those who would believe in him. And we see at the end of verse 20 who he did that for. Peter writes, he did that for the sake of you. If you want clarity on who that is, we look back to the beginning of the letter where Peter writes to those who are chosen according to the foreknowledge of God, verses 1 and 2. So this is Christ's work. He goes and he comes to this earth and he became one of us so that he could represent us before God. We see at the beginning of verse 21, what else he did? We read that through him, through Christ, we are believers in God. We take a look at this and we see that Christ is the one through whom we are believers in God. The author of Hebrews helps us understand what that means. He tells us that God has spoken in Christ, his son. So Christ's teaching was how it is that we come to believe in God because Christ describes God in his teaching. But in that same opening to the same letter in Hebrews, we read that Christ is the exact representation of God's divine nature. And so Christ himself is the one who represents God. We can actually see and understand what God is like. Those in his day who are contemporary to him could actually understand that by observing him physically. We get the privilege of observing that by reading his word and seeing God's character as Christ lived out his public ministry in the written word. 
We go on through verse 21 and we see that God actually raised Christ from the dead. And this is the part that is so encouraging for the believer. As we consider that Christ actually took on flesh, he lived a life, he suffered at the cross on behalf of all of those who had trust in him. And then he entered into death. We see here that God raised him from the dead. And that's exceedingly comforting for the believer. And the reason why is because that proves that God was satisfied with the work that Jesus performed on the cross. What that means for us is that when Christ was on the cross, he actually received in his own body God's judgment against everyone who had put their trust in him. And he actually satisfied God's wrath and he absorbed within his body every bit of God's wrath so that there is no, no more condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So God raised him from the dead to show that he was satisfied with the work that Christ has done. And then the last thing that Christ participated in was his ascension into heaven. It says that God gave him glory. Here Jesus takes back upon himself the glory that he laid aside when he came into this world. Now he resumes that glory, takes that glory back, and he's sitting at the right hand of the Father in all of his majesty, in all of his splendor, in all of his beauty and his radiance and his brilliance. And what he's doing is he is interceding for the saints. He's not reminding God, but he is bearing witness and bearing testimony of the fact that he participated in God's design to save those that God had chosen to himself. So these are all of the things that Christ did. He willingly, gladly accepted God's design for the salvation of the lost before the foundation of the world. He entered into this world. He lived a perfect life. He got a public ministry involving teaching and demonstrating of God's character. Then he went to a cross and gave his life as an atoning sacrifice for those people that God chose for himself. And then he entered into death. And then he was raised from the dead. And now he sits at the right hand of the Father, interceding for those very ones for whom he died. What a privilege. So believer, if you are here today and Christ is your follower, this is our time to cherish him and to enjoy him and to remember what he has done for you. When the elements come to you, take them and hold them and consider these things of Christ. Consider his willingness to participate in his Father's design for your salvation. And when your heart is prepared, take the elements on your own. If you're here today and Christ is not your Lord, he is not your master, if you're living under your own self-rule, I have two things to share with you this morning. The first thing is that we're very thankful that you're here this morning. Primarily, we're thankful that you're here because you have the opportunity to hear the truth that can save you. Secondly, we want you to know that this particular time right here is a time for Christians. It's a, people, a time for people who have trusted Christ with their, their salvation. They've submitted to Christ's lordship. So when the elements come to you, just take them and pass them to the person next to you. And um, after the service, there's going to be somebody sitting up here at the front, and they'd be happy to talk with you. They'll have their Bibles. They'll listen to you. They can hear you. You can pray with them. They can show you from God's word how it is that you can know Christ as your Savior. So men, come and serve us and take the elements on your own when your heart is prepared.